This is the Radfus R103, and it is a key fob sized Geiger counter. Today, we are going to test this little thing, using a number of radioactive test sources, figure out what features it has, and we are even going to tear it down. And then, as usual we will be drawing some conclusions about this thing. Is this a worthwhile product, or is it just a useless piece of crap? This device is of the type, that is designed to be always on. The use case, is as a sort of, disaster detector. We have reviewed a couple of other products like this, but, both have had non-rechargeable batteries that were not designed to be replaced. Both of these devices claim a 10-year battery life. However, there is a fundamental problem with this type of disaster detector, called Murphy's Law. It is almost guaranteed that if a dangerous radiological event occurs, it will be two weeks after your Gamma Scout or Nuke Alert has run out of battery power. And that is one of the advantages of this Radfus device. The battery only lasts about a year, but it can be recharged when needed. Right, let's take a deeper dive into what this product is, and what it can do. Some time ago, we made a video about the Nuke Alert. In that video, we posed a question to the viewers, asking if anyone knew of a viable alternative to the shitty Nuke Alert scam product. One of the viewers suggested this device, so we contacted the creator. The guy that hand makes each of these products, was extremely helpful, and sent us one of his devices. In the pack was the R103 Geiger counter, some keychain hardware, and some luminescent self-adhesive stickers. There is just something that is very appealing about a radiation detector, that can fit on your key ring, or be hung off your backpack. Protection and convenience combined, is a very persuasive sales pitch. This little device, comes with two options for the keychain lanyard. One is a classic key ring type, the other seems more suitable for hanging on a backpack. And then there are these fluorescent stickers. These are for attaching to the buttons, making them more visible under low light conditions. They are surprisingly effective, though the luminescent effect will fade, once they are in darkness for some time. There is also a very simple PC application available. It is little more than a UART terminal that displays the number of counts per second, but, it does have a really useful feature, the two alert thresholds can be set by the user. Essentially, you can customize what level of disaster you want to detect. There are five basic modes of operation for the visible and audio alerts. In the first mode, each particle event detected will give an audible click, as well as an LED flash. The flashing LED color will change from green, to blue, and then to red, as the detected dose rate increases. The second mode is a quiet one, and only gives LED flashes for detection events. The third mode, gives only an audible click for each detection event. And finally, we have two different apocalypse modes. These modes only trigger the alerts once the highest threshold has been reached, and will give either only a visual or an audible alert. The product is recharged via a USB Type-C connector. You should not need to do this very often, as our testing shows that the battery should be capable of lasting for at least a year, of continuous operation in one of the apocalypse modes, and under normal background radiation levels. Here, you can see the battery charging from about 50% to fully charged in around 45 minutes. And then, we have the worst aspect of this product, it is made in Russia. With the current political environment, this is going to make it very difficult to buy this device. 
You won't be able to buy this on Amazon or AliExpress, but there are ways and means to buy this thing. So, if you really want to get hold of one of these, don't expect a smooth checkout process, and there are some risks to consider too. When we reviewed the Horrid Nuke Alert product, it was the shortest teardown in the history of this channel, basically there is almost nothing inside of it. We are hoping for a more interesting teardown this time. We already know that this device is a Geiger counter, which means that at its heart, there is a Geiger Muller tube. Clearly, it isn't a very large tube. The first thing to note, is that this device uses an off-the-shelf case that is intended for use with wireless remote controls. And here we can see the Geiger Muller tube, and it is really bloody small. This one is just 6mm wide and 20mm long. There is an option to buy one with an even smaller tube, the SBM21. It is pretty clear that this small tube is the key component that allows such a compact radiation detector. There are other small sensors that could fit into a product like this, such as photodiodes, but these are not nearly as sensitive to radiation. Taking a look at the top side of the PCB, we can see the SBM10 Geiger Muller tube. This requires a high voltage to operate, and this is provided by a special power supply unit. Here, is the micro speaker that creates the system sounds, and for such a small unit, it can actually create quite a high sound pressure level. This is the battery, it is a 170 milliampere hour cell, and if it were not for the enclosure having a screw going through the middle of the device, could have been substantially larger, perhaps achieving a 3 year battery life from a single charge. Looking at the back of the PCB, we can see the MCU. This is the same type as used in older Arduino hobbyist boards. Here, is a USB to UART converter, that allows the device to communicate with a PC via the USB connector. This is the battery charger IC. It's a bit of an old school device, but rather like my human assistant, it is effective nevertheless. And finally, we have some more parts of the high voltage power supply for the Geiger Muller tube. This is a home-built device, a product that has come from a motivated creator. And, it actually feels pretty professional, given this is a product of a cottage industry effort. Well, it's time to break out the radioactive test sources, and give this thing a real shakedown test. From the teardown of this device, we know a couple of important things about this product. Firstly, that it is only sensitive to gamma rays, and to hard beta particles. We also know that the sensitivity cannot be expected to be very high, the Geiger Muller tube inside this device, is absolutely tiny, so we should expect the response to be lower by the same proportion. Here, for comparison, we can see a typical glass tube from a cheap Chinese counter. This is our favorite specimen of uranium ore. There are a lot of different isotopes in this, but the main one is uranium-238. This test source, gives a very strong reaction on the Raptus product. In fact, it manages to exceed the default maximum alarm setting. That said, this isn't actually a very active source. We normally measure a dose rate of about 20 microsieverts, in direct contact with this rock. This is a check source of cesium-137. It is not a very active test source, but is one of the more dangerous isotopes that is released from a nuclear weapons detonation, or a reactor meltdown. And, we are clearly seeing a positive detection of this isotope, from this tiny Geiger counter. This tiny button, 
contains a minuscule amount of americium-241, and it comes from an ionization smoke alarm. This is principally an alpha emission source, but there is a weak gamma radiation component emitted as well. And we are clearly detecting these weak gamma emissions. We thought we would try a more active americium source, this one has an activity level of about three or four of the little buttons combined. And the Raptus detector gives a nice strong response to this source. Even these low energy, 60 kV gamma photons are easily detected. This is a sample that contains the isotope thorium-232, which is an alpha emitter. Also contained within this sample are many daughter isotopes, which emit gamma or beta radiation, and this little Geiger counter can detect those. This is the pointer from an old Soviet military compass, and contains radium paint. This isotope, Radium-226 is also an alpha emitter, but there are many decay chain products within this sample that will allow it to be detected. The little Raptus detector gives a strong response to this test sample. This is strontium-90, and it is one of those isotopes you really need to be able to detect in any radiological disaster. As you can see, the little Raptus device goes crazy when exposed to this strong source of beta radiation. This is a soft X-ray source. The acceleration voltage is very low, only 10 kV, so the X-ray photons it emits are of a very low energy, and so have very low penetration. Here we are testing at a distance of 20 cm, and we get a very strong response from this X-ray source. We have previously tested the crappy Nucleart device, using this X-ray generator, and it was the only one of our sources that was able to trigger its alarm. But at this distance, the nuke alert does what it is best at. Which is absolutely nothing. The final test we want to perform, is to check the battery life claims. Here we are measuring the battery current, under background radiation conditions. The current consumption has bursts of higher current, when it is charging up the high voltage for the GM tube. We checked with an oscilloscope, and the average current draw is about 15 microamps. So, with a 170 milliampere hour battery, we should expect a battery life of around 472 days. So, a conservative figure would be one year of battery lifetime. This device is never going to replace a proper radiation detection instrument, and it is not a dosimeter. But, it was never designed for those functions. It was created to be an always-on, highly portable, emergency radiation detector. Essentially, it was designed to have the same functions as the Nuke Alert, but, this device has two key differences from that terrible product. Firstly, it actually works. From our testing it is capable of doing what it claims, and in fact it is far more sensitive than we had initially expected it to be, given the tiny detection tube inside this product. The second important difference, is that it is half the price of the Nuke Alert. This thing cost $90. We suspect that the GM tube alone, costs a substantial proportion of the value of this device, these tiny tubes appear to be far more expensive than their larger glass counterparts. Which brings us on to another issue, how to physically buy this device. We don't know how the creator has arranged this process, but we suspect that it either involves a cryptocurrency exchange, or Kazakhstan. But, anyway. The creator's details are in the description. So, feel free to reach out to him if this device is of interest. In summary, this is a very welcome addition to our collection of radiation detectors. And please, do take a look at the reviews of the Gamma Scout and the Nuke Alert, to understand why we hate these devices so much. 
Frankly, this is a useful little device, and it's really, very nice. Anyway, that's all we have for you today. We hope you enjoyed our little video, or at least found some parts of it interesting. If you think we deserve it, then please feel free to give it a like. And you could always hit subscribe, if you want to see more content like this. In a change from our normal practice, we have enabled YouTube advertising. We are saving up for a camera. All of the photography you have seen in our videos, has been captured using a cell phone, the limitations of which, is starting to limit the kind of content we can produce. We wish to express our sincerest gratitude to the following viewers, for their donations towards our camera fund. This is still a hobby channel, so we can say what we want, and YouTube's algorithm can go and get f***ed. Thank you for your time. You now have, only a very short time, to choose the next video to watch.